Hi friends, it's Wit. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with another video to help empower and encourage you on your path to purpose. We're gonna be talking about love, so let's get into the message right after the intro. Okay, friends, so as you can see, it's daytime, so everybody's going about their busy day. So I apologize if you hear my neighbors or the kids talking or whatever. Hopefully, my voice will drown out all of it. Um, you know, not even my voice, the Holy Spirit's voice. So God, get me out the way, get your message across. Let's get into it. So like I said, we're going to be talking about love. And... I have struggled with this, you know, there have been distractions, there have been um, just shame and fear, honestly, like I really didn't want to talk about this because having a platform, you don't want to offend the people who watch and you want to make sure everyone, you know, get something from the message and um, you don't want them to get the wrong idea about you. So it's hard to say certain things that um, people might take offense to. But God has really been working on me. You know, I've been reading in Jeremiah and Jeremiah had to come up against the people and say some, some stuff. He had to call them out on their sin. And that's a hard thing for me because I know I fall short too. Um, but the difference is when you fall short, you know, are you trying to do better? Are you trying to change when God shows you an area of sin in your life? You have to really be aware of if you're just like, oh, I'm human. I can, you know, and keep doing what you're doing. Or if you're truly trying to change, if you're truly trying to become better, and asking God to show you these things. I can definitely tell you, I might not be perfect, but when God shows me a sin in my life, I do work to improve it because I know that whenever there is sin in my life, I can't hear him clearly. I struggle with, um, you know, overcoming it. I struggle in other areas in my life. And I know that whenever God is showing me something, it's to help me to, uh, you know, to advance into my future, it's to protect me um, from a tax is to protect me from myself. Sometimes we need to be safe from ourselves. So I feel like I needed to come on here. I felt it was put on my spirit to just let you all know it's time to turn away. Yes, you, you're, you're human. You fall short. Yes, you make mistakes. Yes, you have more learning to do. But if you're not actually trying, I'm here to tell you, you got to start trying. Like reading Jeremiah and seeing the things that God has been showing me over the last couple of weeks. I know y'all it's been a minute since i've been on here but you know in this time god doesn't let anything go to waste he works all things so yes i have gotten distracted and but in this time god has used that to you know i still spend time with him of course and he would use that to give me more information for this video more insight on why i needed to speak up i can't if i know that my friends and my family and my loved ones and you know the people who are watching this are heading straight to hell are heading into danger. If you know somebody is heading into danger, you can't say that you love them and then watch them keep going in that direction. And God has really put that on my spirit. Like I can't continue to not speak up, you know? So I'm gonna speak up and I hope y'all understand. I hope that you are here to grow. I feel like as hard as I've been fought on trying to get this message out, as many distractions have been thrown my way, I know it's gotta be somebody. I think multiple people that needs to hear this. So. I'm here to give it to you. You know, I had notes and everything, but I'm doing this video freestyle. So if my ADHD kicks in, I'm sorry, but y'all stick with me. Um, first, I just want to talk about sin, you know, lying, putting things above God, um, adultery, you know, fornication. All of these things are keeping you from God, are keeping you from your destiny, your purpose in life. If you keep on walking in sin, it's one thing, like I said, to... Know that you're a sinner, but be actively, you know, asking God to help you with that. Be actively trying to change and to continue to just live like that's okay. To continue to follow the desires of your own heart instead of seeking God. Whenever you're trying to do whatever you want to do, instead of talking to God, for one, you're walking out from under the protection of his umbrella. For two, you're not hearing him clearly. You're not going in the right direction. You can have the best intentions. But if that's not God's will for your life, it's going to lead to the wrong path. It's going to lead down the wrong way. You could be fulfilling somebody else's purpose, messing them up. You could be messing yourself up, holding yourself back from what God has for you. You know, God has a storehouse full of things he wants to give us. But we're so busy trying to do our own thing, he can't even bless us with them. Because we aren't preparing ourselves to get blessed. 
We're not preparing ourselves so that we can receive what he has. If we're sitting here trying to do everything right now, right now, right now, we're trying to get it before we're even ready. So we're not getting ready. We're trying to manage things that we weren't, we were, aren't even supposed to have yet. So we are stuck trying to manage these things, trying to manage things that we were never ready for and trying to hold on to things because we weren't ready and we got them before we were ready. So now we're having to fight to keep them fight for everything. Everything is a fight, fight, fight. We're having to wear ourselves down running a race, a rat race to keep things that God would have gave us and he would have replenished as needed. He would have gave us the energy to sustain these things. He would have sustained those things. So it's important to understand that, yes, I get it. You want what you want. You want it right now. You want to keep up with the rest of the world. You want to have everything. You want to have the nice, nicer things. You want to have the business. You want to have the purpose. You want to look like you're busy. But sometimes God is calling you for something else, but you can't hear him because you're so busy doing everything else. Sin is so big in your life that you can't hear him. God is telling you it's time to turn away. It's time to build a relationship. I'm not here to convict anyone. Like I said, I struggle still with sin. I'm going to struggle with sin for the rest of my life. Even whenever I overcome a sin with the help of God, the enemy tries his best to slide something in there to make me fall back into that same sin because he knows I am weak in that area or weaker or I was weak in that area. So he uses that sin. He repeatedly tries to come back in that area until he realizes he can't and it's not working. And then he tries to attack another area. So yes, I, I struggle with this because I know I am a sinner. I know that I fall short. But like I said, when God brings, makes me aware of this, I get to work on it. I don't sit in it. And you have to do the same thing. We have to, first of all, stop committing idolatry. You have to stop putting things before God. I cannot stress this enough. People always say, I don't have time for God. But in their bio, it says God first. That is not God first. That is not God first. And I keep saying that because we have to get that through our head. Putting God first means we put we wake up with God on our mind. We're asking him what we need to do that day. We're asking him to be with us that day, to help us to serve his will. Putting God first means that even if I don't get any rest, I spend time with him. Putting God first means I'm not going to go out with my friends or I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that because I haven't spent time with God today. Putting God first means when God tells you to move and to do something, you do it. Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, you might be afraid at times. Like I said, I was afraid to make this video. And God knows that. But that's where faith comes in. And he will give it to you. That's where having that relationship comes in. When you have that relationship and the reason that he requires that relationship is because if you could do it on your own, you wouldn't need him. You wouldn't have to go back to him. You wouldn't have to talk to him. So yes, those fears, um, that anxiety, all of that is a good thing because that means you are going or it's a good thing when used in the right context you will be going to god to fill that need but whenever we try to go to the world to fill it it shows in our life and it shows in our eternity we don't want to spend an eternity in hell this life is a vapor like a vapor you know like it's it goes by fast this is nothing in comparison to an eternity so we don't want to spend our whole life trying to make this life good and just to spend an eternity in hell to make you know this small little speck in history to spend forever like infinite time in hell i am not trying to scare you i love y'all and god has shown me if i love y'all i have to be there to warn you you know I, some people just don't they're not even aware that they are sinning but coveting is a sin being jealous and compare, comparing yourself to your neighbors your friends you know, the people around you, that is a sin. Looking at people saying, why do they have that and I don't? That is a sin. Jealousy is a sin, you know. Um, lying, cheating, all of these things. Putting things before God, like I mentioned before. Not honoring your parents. Yeah, I'm coming for everybody. All of us. I, Like I said, I had struggled with sin. Recently, I didn't even realize it until one of my children called it out on me. You know, they were like... I was getting smart, you know, or I wasn't getting smart, but I was being a little catty with my dad. And my son was like, dang, he's just trying to check on you or he's just, you know, making sure. And me and my dad are just alike, you know, so we are both um, somewhat of know-it-alls. So sometimes he'll be trying to tell me stuff I already know. And I'm like, I know this dad, like stop treating me like a kid, but he's doing it out of love. 
and I had an attitude, you know, and I didn't realize it, but God will put things in front of you. That is not honoring my father. That is not teaching them whenever I get old and I do them the same way. That's teaching them to do me like that, to have an attitude because they already know. Sometimes you can just be like, okay, you know, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Whatever. However you talk with your parents, but use respect, honor them, recognize that you won't have them forever and take their wisdom. So yeah, so you might be doing great in life or you might think you are, but then be sitting there talking about your parents or saying they're getting on your nerves or they're wearing you to death or whatever. That's not honoring them. Um, you know, telling those little white lies, asking your friends to lie. That's not honoring them. That's not honoring yourself. Recognize that everything that we do, we have the Holy Spirit in us. The Bible says our body is a temple. I know it took me forever to grasp that. I've heard people say that for so many years and I'm like, what? But a piece of God, you know, when Jesus died on that cross, a piece of God came into us. The Holy Spirit is there to guide us, to help us get to where we're going. It helps us to understand when we read the Bible. It helps us to understand things, you know, spiritual things. If we have the Holy Spirit within us, that means God is with us. God is with us whatever and whatever we do, wherever we go, he's inside of us. Our body is a temple. If you're sitting here lying, you know, if you're sitting here listening to gossip or gossiping, if you're sitting here, um, you know, just doing things to tear down your body, sexual sin, all of this, things that don't honor God. If you're doing this, you are bringing God right along with that, with you. We have to honor our temples. We have to take care of our bodies because this is what I imagine. You know, I, I know it sounds weird, but it has helped me. You know, I've been on an abstinence journey since I've been walking with God and it has been a struggle. But one thing God has shown me, like I said, God is with you in everything. That's just like your earthly parents being here. That's, you don't want to be doing stuff in front of your parents. You know, you, you wouldn't be like, hey, dad, I'm about to go out here and hang out with this guy or with this girl. You want to come sit in the bedroom with us? No. So why would you bring God into that? You know, it just helps to know that God is with you. And I know, like I said, it may sound weird, but it's the truth. Whether you want to admit it or not, God is everywhere. God sees all. He's omnipresent. So you don't want to be bringing him along with you while you're doing whatever you're doing while you're doing your dirt you might not think you might think you're getting away with it because nobody else sees it but god sees it and don't take his patience as weakness don't take his patience as him not seeing it and not being aware he gives us time to try to get it together sometimes but you know like i said he sent jeremiah and jeremiah was mocked and laughed at and everything to prophesy to these people and tell them and warn them that if they don't turn away from their sins he was going to strike them, but if they would turn away, he would not do that. You know, he would restore them. God wants to restore you. He wants to restore you to who he called you to be. He wants to give you blessings. Just like when your kids do good, you want to buy them stuff. You want to treat them. You want to do everything for them because you're so proud of them and who they are becoming. It's the same way with God. When we are doing what he called us to do, he wants to bless us. He blesses us anyways. You know, when your kids been in trouble, they've been doing stuff they ain't supposed to do, but you still love them. So you want to treat them. He'll still bless you sometimes whenever you ain't doing the right things. So, you know, yeah, you might be blessed, but that doesn't mean that God is an idiot. God still sees what you're doing. He might have patience and he might be giving you some time to get it together, but he's not going to keep sending people. At some point, he's going to leave you to your sin and allow that to destroy you. You have to realize you are a slave to whatever you're putting before God. If you're sitting here struggling with, um, you know, all these sins, you're going to become a slave to those sins. You're going to not even be able to say no to certain things because you want to go do this. You can't turn down anything that has to do with that particular sin. You can't, when your friend calls you to um, tell you about somebody, you can't stop gossiping. And then guess what? Your name gets out there. Somebody, oh yeah, so-and-so said this. So-and-so said that. Now your business is out there because you participated in that. You couldn't even shut up. You couldn't make yourself shut up. You couldn't go to God and ask him to help you. So you fell short of that sin and now your business is out there. Now that same friend that called the gossip with you done told everything that you said. So now you're struggling with that curse that came along with your sin. Same thing goes with sex. You know, now you're dealing with 
a child out of wedlock and the kid's father is nowhere around or the mother is nowhere around not helping you with that child left you to do everything on your own you have to realize sorry a call popped up but anyways you have to realize that those sins will curse you those sins will cause you to fall short it will mess up your life it's not you you reap what you sow you know how you keep doing this and keep doing this and keep doing this but you're never really getting much further ahead you're reaping what you sow go to god ask him for help with that change it's time to repent allow god to restore you to who you're supposed to be i don't want to keep beating this you know in your head but I have to tell you the truth. If you don't know, you know, what sin is, ask God to show you areas in your life where you could be falling short. I, maybe nothing I mentioned applied to you, or maybe you don't think it did, but ask God to show you and see what he says about it. He will definitely show you and then ask him to help you to get through it. Ask him to help you how to stop. And it might not happen immediately. You might still struggle in the beginning, but hey, I did it. And you know, three months down the line, my life looked different. Six months down the line, it looked way different. And a year now later, I don't even recognize who I used to be. Whenever I look back at my snap stories um, and my memories on, you know, the different apps or whatever, I'm like, I can't believe I was doing all of that. Like, I can't believe that was me. I can't believe I thought I was cute. I can't believe I thought that was cute. And so many other people thought it was cute. But it just goes to show how lost I was. And to someone who is spiritually sound, I probably, you know, I wanted a godly husband. I wanted a godly marriage, but I was nowhere near godly. Like what kind of man would have wanted me in that condition? The only kind of man that would have wanted me like that was the same type of man that I was as a woman, someone on my level. It's the same thing. We want, so we look for people to complete us, but a person can't complete you. God can. A person can compliment you. Yes. They can, you know, add to you, but they can't complete you. So if you're struggling and you're messed up, you can't look for a person to fix you. They can't fix you. Only God can. You have to be willing to do the work. You have to want to do the work. You have to be willing to say, God, please do your will in my life. I'm just here to tell y'all, God is saying, how long will you have eyes and not see? How long will you have ears and not hear? How many times your grandmother, your, you know, your mother, your siblings, your the people from the church, he's not going to keep sending these people. You got to start being able to hear him for yourself. So you need to sit down, be consistent about your walk with God. If you can make sure you get up every day and go get that money, you can make sure you get up every day and spend some time with God. Or before you go to bed, spend some time with God. Get you a Bible app. Get you something that can make sure you are actually doing what your bio says. Even if your bio doesn't say putting God first, make sure that you're doing that. You know, actually live the life that we talk about. We can thank God all day, but sometimes we thanking God for things that God didn't give us. See, the enemy blesses too. Everything that God does, the Bible says the enemy tries to copy. He tries to copy everything God does. He knows it's working. He knows it works. But the difference is the things that God gives us, he sustains. The things that the enemy gives us, he just gives to keep us in our sins, to keep us complacent, to keep us comfortable where we are. It's time to wake up. You think every door that opens for you it's from God? No, it's not. It's not at all. Like some doors lead you down the complete wrong paths. Business partners that will try, you know, switch up on you, steal your business. Um, relationships that will drain you, leave you feeling less than, leave you feeling like you don't deserve anything. You know, taking your physical things as well as your spirit, just draining you. Friendships that drain you, friendships that lead you down a dark path. The enemy sends things that looks real good. They look like blessings. They may give us money. They may, you know, feed us for a little while, but he doesn't sustain those things. He only gives them to us just long enough to keep us in our sin. And as soon as we try to change, he sends something else to try to distract us. He sends another little blessing of his to try to distract us from doing what God said, from going to God, from getting close to God, because he knows. See, y'all think... You're smart. You think you've outsmarted smart, God and the enemy. You think that you can do it on your own and you got it. Not saying everybody watching this, but I know certain people, I was one of them, thought, okay, yeah, I'll just go to God when I get old. And, oh, well, you know, this is God. God's still blessing me, so I must be doing something right. Tricking ourselves, fooling ourselves. We think, first of all, God's been around a long time. 
Satan has been around a long time, way longer than we have. They've had plenty of time to observe and know. God created us, so of course he knows. But the enemy has had a long time to observe you through these, you know, unclean spirits that are in the world. You think that if God, you, we always talk about guardian angels, but think about all those little movies when you seen, you seen as a kid, there was a little devil and there was a little angel. You think that the enemy ain't sending little minions to watch over you too? To check and see what's working, to check and see what which distractions work for you, what's your weaknesses. He knows, he's been around a long time and he knows what works for people. So he will use whatever he can, whatever trick he can. And that's the reason why you need to know God. That's the reason you need to have a relationship so you can recognize when it's God and when it's the enemy. Y'all, I'm sorry. I know y'all probably hear my neighbors upstairs. It's a kid. I can't do nothing about it, but you know, I hope that it didn't distract y'all too much. But I just want y'all to know, you know, God is not the only one that will bless you. Yes, the enemy will bless you. He will give you, He people think, you know, whatever them tarot cards and all that stuff, they think it's accurate because it speaks truth. I'm going to just warn you right now. The Bible says we are in a spiritual war. There are unclean spirits, just like there are angels. Unclean spirits, the difference in them is they don't talk to God. So they can't be in your mind. They can't hear the things that you think in your prayers in your head. And they can't hear all of that. So yeah, they can report back to these mediums and, you know, readers and all of this. They can report back everything that's going on in your life that they can see and that they can hear. That's why they have so much information on you. That's why they know they have had time, like I said, to spend in the world to see how things are gonna go. They have time to make a educated decision about things. So yeah, they can tell you certain things and you're gonna fall right into it because you believe that it's gonna happen. But God is the only one that knows everything. He's the only one that knows you from the inside and out. He's the only one that can bless you and give you blessings to sustain you and give you an eternity in heaven. I, like I said, I cannot sit by and watch my friends and family go to hell. So guess what? If you come to me for advice, friends, family, you know, YouTube, subscribers, non-subscribers, non anybody, if you come to me and ask me something and I give you an answer, I make a video or whatever, it's going to be based on the scripture. It's going to be based on what God showed me because I am responsible for y'all. I don't want y'all going to hell. I can't, I could not, you know, deal with myself if I'm sitting here giving y'all bits and pieces of information, trying to make y'all feel cozy and love, but not giving you everything that you need to get to heaven. I want you to get to heaven. I don't want you to just experience goodness on earth. I want you to experience an eternity of goodness. I want you to know this love that I know. And I want you to be aware of the things in this world that could be leading you down the wrong path. Anyways, this video has, um, you know, already been pretty long and my neighbors are getting too loud and I have some other stuff to do, but I wanted to get on here firsthand and let y'all know. And I really, really do appreciate y'all, you know, commenting, subscribing, um, sharing this video. I truly appreciate you because you never know who needs to hear this and, you know, doing all of that, allows other people to see it it allows it to get put in front of other people and it allows me to know what's helping you and you know what's not so i am praying that everyone has a blessed week that this really sits in your spirit and that you consider these things that you will not take offense um and what i'm saying like i said i'm not here to judge anyone but i am definitely here to you know encourage you to seek god and i will do that by any means necessary so i love you all i hope that you have a blessed day and i'll see you soon Thank you.